Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> A roller coaster train is one of the most important parts of any roller coaster. They are designed to traverse the many twists and turns of the track while withstanding varying forces and loads. Most importantly, they need to do this while keeping riders safe and secure in normal and abnormal conditions. The earliest style of trains were little more than a box on wheels with seats and maybe a lap bar. Today they are highly engineered machines consisting of electrical, hydraulic, and mechanical systems designed with safety of the riders being the first priority. I've wanted to design and build my own trains for a long time. The clip I just showed is a great representation of the frustrations I've had with the stock connects trains. Anyone who has used the older style Scream and Serpent trains can tell you they're not great. You'll spend hours assembling it just for the trains to not make it over the hill or through a curve. That's not necessarily the fault of the trains themselves as they're just a product of their time. The kits these trains were designed for were first released in the late 90s and early 2000s. Roller coasters being built during this time mostly consisted of large hills, turns, and loops spread apart from one another by smaller elements or sections of straight track. Today's coasters are more condensed, featuring everything the older style of coasters did, and much more. Sharp turns, tight flips, steep drops, and a mix of three are just some of the tricks and maneuvers you can expect on a roller coaster built within the last 10 years. There are fewer rides being built with long sections of straight track to connect elements. Simply put, they pack in more thrills than an equal or smaller footprint. With that being said, building Kinex coasters to try to emulate the newer style of coasters is challenging with the existing trains. It's not impossible to make them work, but it requires limiting your track design. This frustrated me, so I set out to design my own. My main problem with the old trains mainly comes from how the axle and wheel assemblies are mounted. The front car has two axles with the front axle free to rotate about the body of the car and the rear axle fixed to the body. Each car behind is connected sequentially with a ball and socket joint and has a single fixed axle. The issue with this design is that the trains cannot turn left or right. They can only traverse track changes perpendicular to the front car or changes in the bankment of the track. Left or right turns with no bankment are nearly impossible. The trains are designed with a lot of slack in the wheel assemblies and the track they ride on is flexible. If a train has enough momentum, it is able to take a tight turn by flexing the track out of its way, losing most of its momentum in the process. Additionally, if the turn is too tight, the bulky bottom of the train will hit the cross ties holding the track together. Another issue I've had is that the wheels on the stock cars are plastic rollers fixed on a steel axle. This setup creates a ton of rolling friction between the axle and the wheels. Lubricating the axles helps significantly, but there's no great way to lubricate the wheels without making a mess or completely disassembling the trains. Small ball bearings are inexpensive and can offer better performance than a lubricated wheel. Finally, I want to add an additional chain dog on the rear cars. The stock train only has one on just the front car. Adding an additional chain dog will make it easier for the chain lift to push the train over the apex of the hill. I've already solved this issue with a 3D printed modification that was necessary for my previous coaster, Rocket Run. It worked really well on Rocket Run, so I chose to include it on my new trains. It's been said that having a 3D printer is like owning a hammer. Suddenly, every problem starts to look like a nail. I'm proud to introduce my most challenging nail to date, the Wildcat 5. Wildcat is a nickname I gave to the trains and this is their fifth generation. I named it after Cedar Point's defunct roller coaster, Wildcat. My curiosity of the odd track and train design is what led to my interest in roller coasters and my pursuit in a mechanical engineering degree. The Wildcat 5 was the first generation to exceed my expectations. It met every design requirement while also being customizable and repairable. It can take left or right turns with a minimum radius of 2 inches. They're a little longer than the stock trains and weigh about the same. 
the ball bearings help it hold its momentum much better, and the second chain dog makes lift hill design simpler. I heavily based my trains off the second generation trains built by Rocky Mountain Construction for their hybrid coasters. More specifically, I based them off the trains on Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. I chose this for two reasons. First, I want to make my own coasters with scaled down versions of the crazy twists and turns that RMC includes in most of their rides. Second, I actually worked at Steel Vengeance in 2020 and that gave me the opportunity to get close to the trains and observe how they work. There are some notable differences between my trains and the ones I took inspiration from. The biggest one is that RMC wheel assemblies ride on the inside of the track while mine ride on the outside of the track. This is to work around the pre-existing track design. Additionally, RMC's iBox track is flat and the track included in Kinex kits is tubular. Both differences have their own challenges that I need to overcome. These issues alone took 5 months and 4 prototypes to solve. My trains differ from the Kinex trains because each wheel assembly is able to independently turn and rotate to keep itself on the rails, while also working together to keep the body perpendicular to the track. Each axle has two assemblies that are connected together in the main chassis such that they can adjust their yaw and tilt together. If the left side was to turn 15 degrees up, then the right side would turn 15 degrees down. In the theme park industry, a wheel assembly is sometimes referred to as a bogey, which includes the wheels and the hardware connecting them to the car. On my train, each bogey is able to pan and tilt independently to each other. The track is never perfectly smooth, so this allows for the bogies to adjust for track variation. Bogies on real coasters also do this, and you can actually see it if you pay close attention. There are three sets of wheels that make up the bogies, with the top set being what the cars mostly ride on. There are two top bearings in my design to keep the bogies perpendicular to the track. Without the second bearing, the bogies can shift forward such that they pinch the track. There are two guide bearings which are responsible for steering the bogies. The bearings are set apart such that they act as levers and point the main ride bearings in the direction of the track. Finally, there is a single upstop bearing whose main purpose is to keep the trains locked onto the track. Each car is connected together with a custom coupler that allows them to twist without interfering with each other. These parts are some of the trickiest parts to print as they are very small, but I found printing them in batches and using a smaller nozzle on my printer worked perfectly. The wheels on the train are 5x4x10mm ball bearings I purchased from Amazon. They come with a rubber shield and are packed with grease. I painstakingly removed all the shields on all 40 bearings and let them sit in degreaser for a day. The end result is a ball bearing with very little rolling resistance. This will reduce the life of the bearing, but they're inexpensive, so I don't mind. The body of the train is there just for cosmetics. One benefit of 3D printing these parts is that I can have some control over their physical properties. The body is the largest part, but weighs less than all the other 3D printed parts combined. I achieved this by adjusting the infill of the body such that only 8% of the total volume is printed plastic, with the rest just being air. If I wanted a slightly heavier train, then I could reprint the body with a slightly higher infill. The blue body only weighs about 20 grams and takes about 5 hours to print. I can also customize the body design to fit within a certain theme for a roller coaster or even a different style of roller coaster in general. The current body is a low effort attempt to remake the body style from an RMC train. I can simply print a couple new parts to create almost any other style of roller coaster. A train of three cars takes nearly three days to print and assemble. Printing the parts takes nearly two and a half days to print on my Ender 3. The parts have been optimized to reduce wasted support material and to improve their quality. There are either 15 or 24 printed parts depending on which car it is. I am extremely satisfied with the end result of my new trains. It took 7 months and a kilogram of plastic to prototype. Each part only weighs a couple grams which means I made a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. 
I also destroyed several ball bearings and broke my printer a couple times. It was not an easy project, but one I thoroughly enjoyed. I'm considering this project done for now so that I can move on to something else. I'd like to revisit this project again in the future to add additional functionality to these trains, including brakes, body lights, anti-rollbacks, and even spinning seats. I'd also love to hear other ideas for features to add in the comments below. I've got some other things I've begun working on, so stay tuned for more cool roller coaster projects. <laughs>